I don't think we're in Kansas anymore, Toto, and things aren't so wonderful down the yellow brick road. Judy Garland's wide-eyed spunk and earnest performances made her America's sweetheart. But what was her experience like filming The Wizard of Oz? Just how much money did she have to her name by the time she died? I'm Nostalgic Nick with Do You Remember, pulling back the curtain to answers that are truly kind of horrifying, uncovering the pain that began when Judy was just a kid. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, it really helps it circulate. And subscribe to our channel so you catch our next deep dive too. Now without further ado, let's see how a star was born and went out. How did Judy Garland's mother treat her? Judy Garland's triumph began at an early age, and this fast track to success would also lock her into a path of abuse and pain. Garland was born as Francis Gum to parents who were both vaudevillians. They would go on to establish a movie theater dedicated to vaudeville acts. By that point, the couple had two daughters and hadn't planned on having a third. By age two, she was joining her sisters on stage of their dad's movie theater, singing Christmas songs. All our troubles will be miles away. After that, she never stopped performing. An early start to a messy world of stardom. She proved herself and got signed with MGM at just 13 years old and without doing a single screen test. Readying for fame, she officially took up the stage name we know and love. Judy came from a popular 1930 song and Garland was in honor of a film critic, Robert Garland. Judy's mother redefined helicopter parenting when she performed. Judy recalled, quote, she would sort of stand in the wings when I was a little girl, and if I didn't feel good, if I was sick to my tummy, she'd say, you get out and sing or I'll wrap you around the bedpost and break you off short. So I'd go out and sing. Great, great parenting. Before Judy was even 10, her mother put her on energy pills and sleeping pills. She was harshly criticized because she suffered from curvature of the spine. Unfortunately, the people who should have been on her side were a huge part of the problem. All this would set a destructive precedent that followed Judy the rest of her life. How old was Judy Garland in The Wizard of Oz? But if you knew of all the years... Judy just kept on performing. She and her mom had their sights set on Hollywood, and her mom was prepared to have Judy use any means to become a star. Some of those gigs wouldn't age well, and modern audiences would be shocked to see footage of Garland performing in blackface. Not once, but twice. First, Babes in Arms, and then Everybody Sing. Both Garland and Shirley Temple, who we cover in another video, were pretty much under total control of the studios, and had to do stuff like this when they were just kids. Then came The Wizard of Oz, where all her family problems and many new ones could absolutely run rampant. Did you know Shirley Temple was actually the first pick for Dorothy, but a contract kept her tied to 20th Century Fox? Garland's proven history of talented singing helped the studio comfortably bring her on, though MGM always let her know that they didn't think she looked like a star. The studio head even called her My Little Hunchback. On top of that, they always criticized her weight. Garland remembered, quote, From the time I was 13, there was a constant struggle between MGM and me, whether or not to eat, how much to eat, what to eat. I remember this more vividly than anything else about my childhood. Then when the 16-year-old completed The Wizard of Oz, many people were visibly disappointed she wasn't actually a preteen little girl in gingham. Of course, while filming, she was forced into an especially tight corset. Garland wasn't alone facing abuse on set, and we've got a whole video dedicated to the nightmare that really was the filming of The Wizard of Oz, so check that one out next. Mommy Dearest helped the on-set abuse. With her own mother's encouragement, a teenage Garland lived on a diet of cigarettes, chicken broth, black coffee, and a sprinkling of amphetamines. Mm-mm, good. 
Judy was also coming off a schedule that saw her filming two movies at once. Then throw in school, and she spent three hours in classes, two in singing rehearsals. Then the actual work began in front of the camera. Her typical workday ended at 4 or 5 in the morning. Looking back from adulthood, Judy would nickname her own mother the real Wicked Witch of the West. How many biological children did Judy Garland have? Judy gained international acclaim as a child, and from childhood came a lot of her lifelong demons. As a result, her romantic relationships suffered. She once shared, quote, My parents were separating and getting back together all the time. It was very hard for me to understand those things, and of course, I remember clearly the fear I had of those separations. On top of that, her mother remarried on the fourth anniversary of Garland's father dying and she ended up hating her stepdad. The best is yet to come, come the day you're mine. In keeping with the theme of separation, Judy was married five times. She had three kids, Liza Minnelli with director Vincent Minnelli, and Lorna and Joe Luft with producer Sid Luft. She could barely bask in her first marriage to David Rose because MGM, and of course her mom, forbade her, worrying about her image as innocent Dorothy. By marriage number two with Minnelli, it seemed like she found someone she clicked with. He encouraged her to embrace her future, but tragically, Garland self-medicated with sleeping pills and amphetamines. And after getting fired from MGM, Garland had a mental breakdown and attempted suicide. All this stress damaged their marriage, and Garland had an affair, and the two split. Her affair was with husband number three, Luft, but Garland's addictions saw her pretty much live on the other side of the house. And when they split, Garland claimed Luft beat her. Sid denied these claims, but he came under fire when he tried selling off Judy's Academy Award. Her next marriage didn't even last a year, with Garland again claiming abuse. This one didn't even deny it, but said it was in self-defense. Her final marriage was her shortest, tying the knot with a guy who posed as a doctor to hand off pills for her. She effectively married the drugs, and it would be the drugs she stayed with until she died. What is the dark history of Judy Garland? One of the biggest tragedies of Judy Garland is that she could look back as an adult and know the cause of so many of her troubles, but the damage was done. Filming The Wizard of Oz got Judy officially addicted to amphetamines and barbiturates. On top of that, it put her under the watchful eye of some of the grossest people in the industry. The head of MGM, her own boss, never passed a chance to grope her chest. Yeah, even when she was very young. He would compliment Judy's singing, which was basically the only time she got positive feedback. Then he would place his hand on her chest, under the pretense of showing her where the heart is, which is funny coming from a guy who had no heart. It wasn't until adulthood that Judy felt strong and secure enough to stop. His response was to cry. Unfortunately, this wasn't even the end. Another Metro bigwig allegedly called women to his office to proposition them. When it was Judy's turn, she refused. He allegedly said, quote, I'll ruin you and I can do it. I'll break you if it's the last thing I do. Garland would describe life as a blizzard, but instead of snow, she had substance abuse, unwanted advances, emotional pain, self-doubt, and swirling white in place of an identity of her own. She once said, quote, I don't associate Francis Gum with me. She's a girl I can read about the way other people do. I, Judy Garland, was born when I was 12 years old. When a studio puts you under contract, its publicity department starts turning out news copy about you that you read with astonishment. You think, can this be me they're talking about? Everyone saw her as Dorothy Gale, to the point that Garland's more mature roles were met with wariness. But Dorothy marked a hugely traumatic part of Judy's life, pretty much trapping her there for decades, till her very dying breath. Was Judy Garland a civil rights activist? Even while Garland fought her own battles behind the scenes, and boy did she have a lot of them. She also fought on the behalf of others, as Judy became a huge force in the civil rights movement. In fact, for all the pain stardom caused her, Garland used her platform to fundraise right alongside the likes of Sidney Poitier, 
Rita Moreno, Paul Newman, Josephine Baker, all the legends. Though she never directly funded any related causes, she was also a bit of an icon among those fighting for marriage equality. And when Garland was told this, she just shrugged and basically said, hey, I sing for people, whoever they are. What was the official cause of death for Judy Garland? Garland's final years marked a downward spiral. Embezzlement and mismanagement drained her wallet. She owed thousands in back taxes. She fought desperately to make a profit at each of her shows, but everything she made was seized to pay her debts. Whenever she did perform, she looked downright ill, and when she felt emotionally overwhelmed, she always turned to pills to conquer her fears. It was all just too much. And on June 22nd, 1969, America's sweetheart suffered an accidental barbiturate overdose. She died on the bathroom floor at the age of just 47 years old. Her LA Times obituary would paint an even sadder picture, reporting Judy suffered from hepatitis, kidney disease, extreme exhaustion, and injuries caused by falling. Dorothy and Judy were always tied to one another, for better and for worse. The cause of so much strife and fame for Garland became the very thing she chased all her life. As she said, quote, I've always taken the Wizard of Oz very seriously, you know. I believe in the idea of the rainbow, and I've spent my entire life trying to get over it. Judy Garland won the hearts even while her own broke over and over again. She truly was a powerhouse of talent who was too rarely told just what a remarkable force she was. But even that came at a huge cost, one that Garland would pay her entire short life. All right, now we need to hear from you all. What surprised you most about Judy Garland's life? What does The Wizard of Oz mean to you? Did you grow up watching it once a year at least? And give me another roll of Judy's that I should check out. Get in the comments and tell us all things Judy Garland. If you enjoyed today's deep dive, please give it a thumbs up, it really helps. Subscribe to our channel so you never miss a throwback video. And from all of us here at Do You Remember, we want to thank you very much for watching.